You are on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. Every empire in Stellaris has a council where leaders can be appointed to give empire-wide bonuses that scale with the level of that leader. These bonuses come from your councillor positions. In this video, I'm going to go through every councillor position available to normal biological empires and rank them in a tier list. We won't be going through the power level of the individual civics, just the councillor positions that accompany them. It is important to remember that whilst the councillor positions themselves can be very powerful, most of the power in your council will come from having council specified leaders with special council traits that grant other empire wide bonuses as long as that specific leader is on your council. So not just the output of the position is important, but also what type of leader we can employ in that council position. Without any further ado, let's dive in and start right at the bottom with the F tier. Even the council positions down here in the F tier are not entirely useless. All of them do benefit your empire in some way. These ones just happen to benefit your empire the least. Never forget though, you must put a leader in a councillor position. So if you have a fantastic level 10 leader, very well suited to the council, but a very, very, very bad councillor position that you could put in, it might still be worth putting that terrible position in to get your level 10 leader on the council, especially if for other positions you only have low level leaders which aren't very well suited. The administrative coordinator grants minus 2% administrator upkeep per level. That's a total maximum of around minus 26% if you get a level 10 leader with all other bonuses. You'll notice quite a few of the positions down here in the F tier have upkeep reductions or something similar. Reducing administrator upkeep means reducing the upkeep of our bureaucrats or whatever equivalent position you have. This basically reduces the amount of consumer goods they're going to use at the maximum by around 0.5. That's not a very large reduction per pop. The Archpriest basically does exactly the same thing, but this reduces Priest upkeep by 2%. It is the spiritualist version of Administrative Coordinator. Chief Herald of Arms grants you plus 5 unity from subjects per level. I've noticed in my testing though, I'm not sure this entirely works correctly. I had around 10 subjects and a level 10 leader on the council, but I was only getting about 140 unity from this position. I think it may scale with the subject opinion or maybe some other modifiers. I'm not entirely sure. If somebody knows for certain exactly how this is working, let me know in the comments below. But, but generally in my testing, the amount of extra unity you're going to get is very, very minimal. You'd probably prefer having something giving a percentage modifier to your unity output. The Chief of Service reduces your army upkeep by 1.5% per level and you'll get 25 army starting experience per level as well. Getting more army starting experience is fine and reducing army upkeep could be good if you have lots and lots of armies in the late game but we're still probably talking about, you know, at the maximum here, 100 or so energy credits. Which is, even in the best case scenario, quite a minimal bonus. The Head Arbiter can either be a commander or an official, so you do get a bit more diversity with this position than the other previous ones we've looked at that could only be fulfilled by one leader class. You'll get plus 2% worker pop resource output per level. That means you'll max out at level 10 at 20% and with some other bonuses around 26%. There are lots and lots of ways of boosting worker pop resource output such that by the late game, 20 additional percent in terms of bonus output will actually only give you an effective increase of probably more like five or 10%, a very, very minimal amount. Combine that with the fact that vassals are so powerful and prevalent now in gameplay that you'll probably get your basic resources from other empires rather than creating them internally and the Head Arbiter does not make sense as a position for you to take. Employment Commissioner is basically identical to the previous role we looked at, and thus it's right here down in the F tier. The Integration Facilitator reduces Empire size from districts by 3% and district upkeep by 3% per level. Given that Empire size from districts is the smallest, pretty much, factor in terms of your Empire size contribution, 
that's pretty irrelevant. The reduction to district upkeep is probably slightly better, but we are here only talking about a modest amount of energy and rare resources. A strategy could be made where you combine other bonuses to reductions in district upkeep, but even then I think you're maxing out at around minus 50%. The Labour Magistrate increases slave happiness by 2% per level. Given that slaves generally have the lowest possible political power, their happiness should be relatively irrelevant if you want to maintain a stable empire. So increasing their happiness is fine, but why would you even bother? There is no economic benefit in making slaves happier. Master Architect increases planetary build speed by 2% per level. This can be very useful early on at the start of the game, when the position is not really available, but later on you'll be getting lots and lots of bonuses to build speed on your planets that an extra 20% in total if you had a level 10 leader is really not very good whatsoever. The Master Necromancer increases your unity production from necromancers by 0.5 per level. That means you'll get a maximum of 6 base unity, maybe 6.5 if you have a level 10 with the 3 extra bonus points you can get in there, but that's really not that great. Uh, you only have 2 necromancers per planet, so getting an extra 12 base unity production on the planets with necromancers is not very much additional unity for an entire councillor slot. The Prime Speaker increases your faction unity bonus by 3% per level. That means that around the max level it's equivalent to the faction unity bonus you get from one level of egalitarian. We don't take egalitarian for that plus 25% faction unity bonus as well. That's not the main reason we take it. We take it for the specialist resource output and the great living standard you can get. This is going to be such a minor overall bonus to your unity output that unless you've got absolutely no other positions at all available to you, which cannot be the case, you always have more positions than slots, why would you take this? Protector of Liberty increases egalitarian ethics attraction by 7% per level. That means you can get up to a maximum of 70 with level 10, or you know, around 100 or so if you get to level 13 or 14 with, with the additional bonuses as an effective skill. We can already get a massive bonus to the attraction of Egalitarian by simply promoting the faction, which is entirely free by the way. We can also get from Leader Traits lots more Governing Ethics attraction, and of course the only way for Protector of Liberty to work is to be some degree of Egalitarian, so we must already have that as a Governing Ethic and thus can improve our Governing Ethics attraction to get more Egalitarianism. Yeah, so why, why really would we want this? If anyone has an idea, a zany strategy they use with it, please let me know in the comments below. I'd, I'd love to hear how you could use this in an interesting way, but, but I'm really racking my brain and, and coming up with pretty much nothing. The Science Director reduces Researcher Upkeep by 2% per level. Just like the Archpriest and the Administrative Coordinator, this really, really sucks. We're talking at best, you know, half a consumer good per researcher. Shadow Counselor reduces Ruler Upkeep by 4% per level. This is even worse than any of the other upkeep reductions we've seen because rulers are always a vast, vast minority within your empire. You'll generally have somewhere between 0 and 4, 5 or 6 on every planet. That's really not very many to get a 4% discount per level on. The Superintendent increases your Administrator output by 2% per level. There are so many other stackable bonuses we can get to Unity output that this really is a drop in a very, very large ocean. On top of that, given the Unity you are already generating from your factions, from the politician jobs across your empire, you generally don't even really need Administrators, so getting a bonus on a job that you don't have many of is never really a good idea. Chief Extraction Officer increases your mineral output by 2% per level. This is nice, it's nice to get a bit of extra bonus here, however you're only getting that from your miners and there are lots and lots of other bonuses we can already have from technologies, traditions, uh, other sorts of things, therefore it is a very minor bonus to get, if you'll pardon the pun. Warden the Baths grants plus 0.5 unity from mutagenic spa attendants per level. 
Exactly like the Master Necromancer, you can only have a couple of these per planet in your empire, so getting a very small amount of unity from them means that that juice will not be worth the squeeze. The change in quality from the F tier up here to the C tier is minor, but I think noticeable. Chief of Secret Police increases your governing ethics attraction by 5% per leader level. This can be particularly useful if you are going on a conquest spree and you've got lots and lots of new pops following ethics that do not align with your empires. Especially if you're a slaving or authoritarian type empire which can suffer and does not have many tools in its arsenal to deal with low happiness and stability problems. This is, however, probably the worst position up here in the C tier, I, I should just say that. As one final note, the reason governing ethics attraction is relatively good is that the more pops you have following factions with high approval in your empire, the higher the unity income you'll have and the higher the happiness bonus you'll get for pops because of your factions. Commander of the Watch grants 3% defense platform damage and 3% defense platform hull points per level. If you are an inward perfectionist, which you need to be in order to take this position, this could be relatively useful as you probably are playing some sort of defensive style campaign looking inwards rather than outwards. Though overall defense platforms are not that great, so this isn't that impressive. If this was fire rate for all ships or hull point for all ships, we would be having a very different conversation. Elder Farmer increases your farmer output by 5% per level. If you are running catalytic processing, this is almost certainly A or S tier because it's great to have an additional bonus to your farming output, making your farming workers more efficient and thus meaning you can have fewer of them to support a large alloy economy. Otherwise, you farmers are generally quite trash outside of catalytic. The Grand Marshal increases your diplomatic weight by 2% per level. If you're trying to become Galactic Custodian, Galactic Emperor, or sway the Galactic Senate to your side, this can be rather useful. Otherwise, you probably don't need to bother with it. The High Ambassador increases your trust cap by 5 per level. This can be very, very useful when dealing with AI empires, but in a multiplayer game against other players, it's pretty irrelevant. The High Curator boosts your monthly unity by 2% per level. This can give you a healthy boost to your overall unity output empire-wide, though when we compare it to other bonuses you are going to be getting, it is actually quite a small addition. Keeper of the Vaults reduces your leader upkeep and leader cost by 2% per level. This means recruiting leaders will be cheaper and maintaining your leaders will be cheaper as well. Leader upkeep relative to your unity income probably peaks around the year 20 or 30 up to probably around 50 or 60. That is the best time to have a Keeper of the Vaults as your leader when your leader upkeep is relatively high compared to unity income. Outside of that relatively brief window, especially later in the game when your unity income gets very, very large, but your leader upkeep doesn't scale as much, it's really not worthwhile. The Lord Steward increases your ruler pop resource output by 2% per level. This will grant you basically only a minor bonus to unity output for your rulers. However, if you are also some form of a technocracy, if you can get that in there as well, then you're going to be getting a bit of science too, which is relatively nice to pick up on the side. The Minister of Ascension is identical to the High Curator we looked at three positions ago. Just remember what I said about a minute and a half ago. The Minister of Extravagance increases your ruler happiness by 4% per level. Now, this can be good because you will be having the hedonistic living standard, that's what comes alongside this civic, granting 700% additional political power to rulers. Early on in the game, you can quite easily get your rulers up to 100% happiness with that living standard and the Minister of Extravagance. But any additional happiness above that is entirely unnecessary and will not be productive, it will be lost. So this can be alright early, but later on when you have lots of other happiness bonuses from factions and other such things, it should probably be removed as it is no longer benefiting your empire. The Prime Herald increases your Priest output by 2% per level. 
This is not just the unity though, I believe this is also the amenities, so it is a small boost to your amenity efficiency as well. Speaker of the Kin increases your citizen political power by 2% per level. If you have a multi-ethnic society with some pops being resident rather than full citizens, this will buff your happy citizens, giving them more political weight overall and thus increasing your stability on your planet. Additionally, even if you only have citizens in your empire, this will buff the political power of all pops, meaning that while stability will remain unchanged, the unity output you get from your pops will be increased because it will seem like there is more political weight behind each of your factions. The Shroud Walker Teacher is a special counselor position you can only get if you ask for a leader from the Shroud Walker Enclave. You'll get plus 5% chance for psionic research options per level, plus 1% monthly unity, and a reduction of 2% shroud delve cost, and that is all obviously per level. Now that the developers have changed the game a little bit, now that the ascension paths no longer require RNG to get their technologies, this is much less useful. The monthly unity is fine, and if you do psionically ascend, the shroud delve cost reduction is all right. You're looking at somewhere between, you know, 100 and 200 energy cost reduction there. Overall, though, these are minor bonuses in line with some of the other unity bonuses we've seen in this tier. And if you're enjoying this video, please delve into that like button. In the B tier, we have positions that are clearly better than the previous two tiers that were honestly very, very close in terms of power level. These are generally niche positions which are good in some cases, though you might not need them all of the time. The Minister of State honestly has dog poop bonuses. You're going to get an additional 2% to Envoy Improve and Harm Relations, First Contact Speed and Infiltration Speed per level. That generally sucks. However, not taking this position on your council gives you a multiplicative 25% penalty to your diplomatic weight. So if you're trying to get things done in the galactic community, not having a minister of state is very, very prohibitive because that 25% penalty is, I need to emphasize this, multiplicative, not additive. So you'll only have 75% net of the total diplo weight you get after all of your additive modifiers are calculated in. Apostle of Death improves your Sacrificial Edict effect by 2% per level. Sacrificial Edicts can be very, very powerful, so getting anywhere between a 2 and 20% bonus on those effects would be rather nice. The Bloom Herald reduces the cost of Gaia Cedar buildings by 5% and the upkeep of Gaia Cedars by 5% per level. The cost and the upkeep is probably the main issue with the Gaia Cedar buildings going down that civic path. So removing that, possibly re removing 50% of that, is very, very nice. Though later on in the game, when your economy is really going very well, that bonus is really not very useful. This is much better earlier on. The Grand Storyteller has relatively modest bonuses, plus 2% leader experience gain and plus 2% governing ethics attraction per level. However, what makes it much better, what is putting it above the C and F tiers, is the fact that you can have any type of counselor in this slot, a commander, an official, or a scientist. This makes it very, very versatile and much more powerful than just the bonuses it is granting. The Labour Intendant reduces Empire size from enslaved pops only by 2% per level. As pops are the largest source of Empire size in your empire, and if you're a slaving empire, you probably have a majority of slave pops, this is a great reduction to pop size empire wide. Later on in the game, this gets very, very powerful when Empire size starts spiraling out of control and you want to rein it back in to reduce your tech and tradition costs. The Primary Overseer increases ruler happiness by 1% and gives 0.2 unity from enforcers per level. The unity bonus is very minor here, but that additional ruler happiness will give you quite a lot of extra stability because of the way that your society is structured with the oppressive autocracy civic. That extra stability will grant you lots of extra resources from jobs, so you should probably go for it. The principal instructor is very, very similar to the storyteller. 
will get 2% leader experience gain per level, but this counselor position is available to any leader class at all. The Shadow Weaver grants 0.02 dark matter from researchers per level. So at the top end here, you're getting around 0.1 base additional dark matter output from each of your researchers. That can be very, very nice. And actually, it almost pays for their upkeep in some cases if you've got lots of other bonuses stacked in there as well. Also, if you're going for a crisis run, getting this dark matter production early on in the game can allow you to build up a significant stockpile and thus reduce the time and number of stars you have to destroy before you can conquer the galaxy and ascend to the shroud. Master Crafter increases your armor hit points by 1% per level. This basically means it functions as either one or two of the armor hit point repeatable techs getting you, you know, around 5 to 10% additional armor hit points. It's good, uh, it's great to have extra armor hit points, it's not the best military bonus we'll see, but it is a nice one to have in there. The Watcher of the Imperium gives you plus 2.5 base intel and 2% infiltration speed per level. Combining that with the other intel bonuses you get from being the Galactic Emperor, you should have 100 intel on every single nation in the galaxy with this council position. Later on, different technologies, different uh, bonuses may make this somewhat obsolete, though it can be quite nice to pick up. Speaking of watching, thank you very much ladies and gentlemen, you've made it to the secret callout. I don't really believe it myself, but if you are still watching this video, if you haven't skipped ahead, if you've actually watched through this bit, let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Make sure to use the word Imperium, Empire or Imperial in your comment, just so that I know. The Master Forger grants you 2% armor hit points in friendly systems and a 10% resource gain from scavenging debris per level of the leader. Again, like the Shroud Walker Teacher, you can only get your hands on this special position by getting a leader from the Salvager Enclave. We're now up in the A tier. Items in this tier are not quite at the auto-include level, but they are generally quite, quite good. You may be surprised to see the Ruler Counselor position here in the A tier and not in the S tier. Generally, the bonuses are quite good for your empire, especially early on in the game. That additional edict fund that all of them give invariably is very, very useful. It's basically done away with one of the ascension perks that was critical to success of most builds in the game previously. Executive Vigor that used to grant 100 edict fund. However, the ruler doesn't sit up in the top tier in the S tier. And that's because honestly, sometimes there are better positions than this one. I would often like to remove the ruler, but I'm simply unable to do so. Paradox, please fix. Look, I just want to play an anarcho-capitalist state. What's the problem? What's the problem, eh? You may be a bit surprised to see the Arbiter of Duels so high up in this tier list. Well, what does it do? You'll get 10% duelist output per level. Now, Montu, you might be thinking, doesn't that only give us unity? Well, that's where you'd be wrong, friend. This is not only granting an increase to unity income from our duelists, we'll also get more naval capacity going from two up to possibly four and up to double the amenities output. You can get up to 25 amenities output per duelist with the Arbiter of Duels. That is insane amenity output efficiency and I am all here for it. The only issue with this position is you do first have to take the Duelist Civic and the Civic itself is not that great. Chairman of the Mines gives you 0.05 stability from miners per level. Now that might not sound like much, but let's do a little bit of maths. Let's say you're level 5, that's 0.1 stability per miner. So with a tidy 20 miners, we're looking at a nice 2 additional stability, which gives you additional resources from job output on your planets. With Subterranean, this can be particularly effective. Of course, if you go for Catalytic Processing, which is very, very powerful at the moment, the effectiveness of this drops all the way down to C or F tier. Outside of that, it is really cool though. The Lord Chancellor gives you 3% Counselor experience gain per level and can host any type 
of leader. Counselors are the best and most important leaders to level up in your empire. Getting very high level counselors with destiny traits is very, very powerful. I'm looking at you, Genius Armorer. So rolling out the Lord Chancellor early, getting high level 8 counselors early in the game is very, very good. The Minister of Exploration grants 5% anomaly research speed, 5% archaeology exploration speed, and a whopping 3% jump drive range per level. At the maximum here, you're basically looking at getting around 45% additional jump drive range. That is very, very good. It grants you a lot of tactical and strategic flexibility for your military forces. The other bonuses are nice. I'm just obsessed with this jump drive range increase. The standard bearer gives a nice tidy plus 1% naval capacity per level. Having a higher naval capacity allows you to field more ships and thus have more military might to enforce your righteous ethos on a divided and ungrateful galaxy that deserves the boot heel. That aside, it's also quite good for fighting the crisis. The hyperlane supervisor sounds a bit poncy, but honestly, it's really quite nice. You'll get plus one stability per hyperlane registrar starbase building. That could grant you as much as 15 additional stability on your planets from a single starbase building. Combine that with a black site and you can easily get between 10 and 20 additional stability on every world without having to worry about anything. No longer is invading foreign planets going to be an issue for you. You can forget about happiness causing problems and just put buildings granting stability on starbases and laugh your way all the way back to the bank. The Master Scrapper increases your chance to salvage ships by 1% per level. Salvaging ships as a scrapper is the main bonus of that civic, so increasing the chance of getting free ships is very, very, very good. Speaking of cheap salvage, if you'd like to get your hands on Humankind Victoria 3 and $303 worth of other games for only $12.99 and support this channel, you might just be interested in joining Humble Choice this month in April. For only €9.99, you get your hands on a host of really good games, 20% off thousands of games on the Humble Store, exclusive member perks, and 5% of your purchase will go to charity. The best part of all of this is this is not a subscription where you will lose access to these games after you finish your Humble Choice membership. So you can sign up for only one month and get all of these fantastic games. The link to that and more down in the description below. We're now up to the S tier. If you've skipped ahead and not watched the rest of the tier list, shame on you, but, but I do understand. Also, let me know down in the comments below if you've done that, just so I can shame you properly. Items in this tier are generally auto-include if you have them available. Sometimes you might be deciding between the different auto-include items that you see here. Let's dive in. The Minister of Defense reduces your upkeep of armies, ships, and star bases by 2% per level. The main reason that you must always have a Minister of Defense, and I, I do mean always, is that you get a minus 25% penalty to naval capacity if you don't take a Minister of Defense. This position must be included in every empire you have, unless you're doing something insane and not building any ships. In which case, sure, who cares? We're probably not even playing Stellaris anymore then. The Minister of Research is likewise an auto-include position that you must always have no matter what other choices are available to you. It grants plus 2% research speed per level, which is very, very good. And if that wasn't enough, if you do not have this position, you will get a minus 25% penalty to research speed, meaning the net penalty here is anything from 27 to 45% for not including this position. That is crippling. The Astral Minister gives your priests a base research output of 0.2 physics per level. That means you'll generally get somewhere from 1 to 3 base research output from your priests. 3 physics research is the same amount of physics research as the base output of a normal researcher. This means you can double up your priests as both researchers and unity producers. That is a great level of pop efficiency, and I absolutely love it. 
And if that wasn't enough, the astral minister position allows you to have either officials or scientists running the damn show, making it much more versatile. The director of trade gives you 0.4 trade value from traders per level. If you are running a trade-based empire, do not leave home without this civic. It is the best civic and counselor position in the game when it comes to trade. You're looking here at getting up to six additional trade value from traders, which can then be modified by bonuses, and if you're stacking these bonuses correctly, of between two and 300% to trade value, making that four to six trade value turn into a whopping 12 to 18 trade value. If you're in a Holy Covenant Federation, that means this position alone grants you around four to six energy and four to six unity per trader in your empire. That is a crazy increase to your economy. The first Citadel is possibly the best counselor position in the game. If you have access to this, if you've taken the Sovereign Guardianship Civic, don't forget to put this on your council. You get so many crazy bonuses. Let's go through them. So you get 10% defense army damage. So what? 5% starbase hull points and 5% starbase armor points. So what? 5% shield hit points in friendly systems. That's not just for starbases, that is for all fleets. 5% fire rate in friendly systems and 5% accuracy in friendly systems. If this trait was only 1% per level, it would still be very good. The fact that it is 5% per level is honestly a bit insane. At the top level here, you could get out around 75% accuracy, fire rate, and shield hit points for every single ship in your empire when they are in friendly space. That basically makes you nigh unconquerable if your economy is relatively similar to your neighbors. Of course, those top numbers are assuming you have a level 10 leader, you are running the agenda for plus two effective counselor experience, you've taken statecraft, and you've gotten a couple of other bonuses like oligarchic. The first warden is a very simple position, but it is very, very powerful. It reduces your pop amenities usage by 1.5% per level. Combine this with dictatorial and possibly the ascension perk, uh, one vision, and you can at least half your pop amenities usage, if not get it even lower than that. The efficiency you can have from your pops by reducing pop amenities usage is so crazy. The Lord Commander grants you 1% ship fire rate and 2% army damage per level. Getting an extra 5 to 10% ship fire rate for a council position is very, very nice. It's not quite as powerful as some of the other bonuses in this tier, but it is still a very good, very solid councillor position to take. The Lord High Admiral grants you 1% naval capacity per level, identical to the standard bearer, but then you get this crazy extra bonus of plus 50 ship starting experience per level. Combining this with the destiny trait that grants additional, I think it's 500 or 750 ship starting experience, and you can make all of your ships start out at level two with 1000 experience minimum. That will grant you loads of extra bonuses to fire rate and other such things, giving you a very, very powerful navy. Minister of the Seas can be very, very powerful when combined with the civic it comes from, anglers, and catalytic processing. You will get plus 0.3 food from anglers and plus 0.2 consumer goods from pearl divers per level. If you shift your consumer good output to be only from pearl divers, that means you can entirely get rid of artisans and you could also take the uh, military spending policy to get plus 25% alloy output and minus 25% consumer goods, but still produce more consumer goods than artisans without that negative modifier. This is a very, very powerful position. Minister of War Production is only available to Fanatic Purifiers and grants you a very tidy plus 2% monthly alloys per level. That's just really nice. Alloys allow you to build more ships. More ships gives you more military power and the ability to enforce your will on an ungrateful galaxy. Principal Catalyst basically does exactly the same thing, giving you 2% catalytic technician output, which is honestly really, really nice. 
That is an additive bonus that goes on top of the base output increase that you're already getting for being a catalytic empire. Speaker of Parliament gives you plus 3% council agenda speed per skill level. There are lots of ways of modifying the base output to council agenda speed, namely getting your council full of six members that are high level. Getting additional council agenda speed on top of that should allow you to pump out many, many agendas and be very, very powerful. In fact, the main issue with this is getting too many agendas out too quickly and running out of new agendas to complete. The Tribune of Rights is identical to the First Warden, granting minus 1.5% pop amenities usage per level. And it's up here in the S tier for exactly the same reasons. Divine Conduit is only available to psionically ascended empires that have taken on the Divine Sovereign Civic. You can put any type of leader in this position, making it very, very versatile, and it grants plus 1% psionic pop output per level. This will, of course, also stack with your resource output bonuses from telepaths that you'll have across your empire and grant you additional economic power. It's really, really good. If you have access to Divine Conduit, put the damn thing on your council. The Curator Archivist grants you a similar bonus to your Head of Research, but in some ways it's actually kind of better. There are very few bonuses now to Researcher output in the game, so getting plus 2% Researcher output per level from this position, available only if you get a leader from the Curator Order, is very, very good. You'll also get minus 2% Researcher upkeep as well, which, whilst not amazing, is a nice bonus to have on top of that Researcher output. This one is generally an auto include for me if I can get my hands on it in most playthroughs. Last, but by absolutely no means least, we have the Trader Liaison. You can only get this position by getting a leader from a Trader Enclave. You'll get plus 2% trade value and minus 1% market fee per level. The market fee is probably the biggest bonus here, allowing you to trade or sell with the galactic market at a vastly reduced price. Though the additional trade value bonuses are still good and you probably don't want to ignore it. Combining this with the Merchant Guild position is going to give you so much money. If you've enjoyed this video on the Counselor positions in your Empire, but you're wondering, well, what about the civics that accompany them? Worry no longer. I have a complete tier list of those civics going through every effect and ranking them in order of power so you don't have to. If you'd like to see that, click the video on screen now.